Hello, it's Deborah from Attic Lane. Welcome to part three of our video series showing how to make your own junk journal from found things. We've found and chosen our papers, we have stained them, we have prepared our journal out, out of cover from a cereal box and in this video we're going to look at how we're going to add extra interest to our pages and how we're going to create tuck spots and little spaces to keep ephemera and to make journaling. And we're going to start with a template which shows us how we're going to stitch our journal together. And I don't like measurements, so, and I'm not very good at working out where the middle is and all that sort of stuff. So I like to do five little holes on something that is this size. So this is uh, six and a half inches long. I want to do five little holes to help me uh, thread my signatures in place and hold them there. So all I'm using my ruler for is uh, to measure two points on this piece of paper which is the same height because the signatures will be in like this. So this is the same height as this piece of paper and I'm going to measure in half an inch from the top I'm going to mark it, I normally do this in pencil, but I'm going to mark it in black to make it easier for you to see. So half an inch in, top and bottom. And then I'm going to throw the ruler away because it's just too much hard work to try and work out what is that space and divide it by two and yada yada. So what I do is um, I do it the lazy way and I fold it in. And then pinch it in the middle where it crosses my other line I folded it like that to begin with, I didn't show you that bit, but I folded it like that and I ran a little pencil line down there so I knew where the middle of this was. And now I can see there, that is where those all match up. So that little point there is where my centrepiece is and I'll mark that with my pen. And then I'll take these two points and put them together. So. They match up there, make sure that all the creases are in the right places, pinch it so I know a hole will go there. It's not very scientific. I'm not scientific. I'd like to do things by eye, which is why quite a lot of my things end up on the walk. <laughs> but I <laughs> that's what gives them their charm. That's what I tell people. And my other hole will go there. The reason that I do that before I put all of my pieces of paper together ready is because sometimes you might want to add in something that isn't the full size of your book. So let's say I wanted to add in a smaller page. This is one of the off cuts. So let's say I wanted to add that page. Now I know because I've got my little holes already set out on my little cheat sheet here, I know that if I put this in the middle that it will be captured here and here and here. So I know there are three points that, at which this piece of paper will be held in place. It'll miss these two outer ones but that's okay because there are, th there are three to hold it in place in the middle. And also it means that I can then see if I decide that I want a piece that just is on the bottom and I, and I don't want it to go up to this height here. Will it be caught? Yes, it'll be caught here, here, here and here. So there'll be four places. What I want to avoid is a piece of paper being added that is just there, just on the point where it should have a hole in it because at that position there's a risk that that would rip. It would rip quite easily I think. And then down here it would hardly be captured at all. There'd be quite a big difference there, maybe an inch before that was caught again. So this way it helps me work out if I can add smaller pieces of paper, maybe envelopes that are folded over, or if I can add it at the top or the bottom. It's also, this is also, um, I, I, I can, this comes, <laughs> to me this comes under the heading of technical, so um, I, I'm not very mm, interested in technical things, I'm more interested in the making and the doing things, so I get this out of the way early and then I don't have to worry about it anymore. Now that we're at that point, let's see what we can do with our pieces of paper that are going to form our signature. I'm going to take each of these and I'm going to fold them in half. And I'm going to use a palette knife, which I think I have easily to hand, yep, 
to give a nice neat crease. You could use a bone folder. My bone folder is under the desk and um, I've just grabbed for this because I find this does just as good a job. I'll fold all of these pieces of paper over and then when I've got a lovely neat little stack I'll show you how they look. Here we have a lovely neat stack of papers all prepared. I've put quite a tight little crease in the centre so that it's easy to see exactly where the centre is and I've got a couple of ways of hiding some uh, little issues that we've got with the papers. So here there's um, a tiny little tear so I'm going to keep that to one side. I've got one of the soft pieces of paper here which has got a tear here, there and we're going to do something about that and I'm just going to check the rest of them. I think they're all okay. I think they're fine. I want to make sure, I don't mind if the pages uh, on the edges are, are mottled like this, it's not a, an even flat straight edge, that's fine, but if there's a tear or if there's a rip I want to deal with that because I don't want to worry that it's going to create a bigger rip in my page once it's all sewn in place in my front cover. So I think those are the only two that we need to address, so I'll show you how we do that. I said that I'd kept some of the pages from when I'd uh, cut the uh, larger pages down to size, I'd kept some of the scrap pieces and these are some of them. This for some reason is a scrap piece, I can't remember why, but it is. But it's handy because it's, it's cut exactly to the same uh, height as this piece of paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my smaller paper trimmer and I'm going to cut a piece off there, maybe just just over an inch thick. I'm not going to be precious about measuring it because, well, we've established I'm not very technical. But what I am going to do, ooh, which side shall I have? Ooh, 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 like that side. Okay, so I'm going to fold it in half. Um, and I'm just going to put a neat little crease down the centre. like that. That's perfect. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold that over the page where my tear is. Uh, oops, 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 oops. There we go. And I'm going to glue that into place. And it's that easy and then we've got a nicely protected edge to our page and we've also got a little bit of extra interest because we have this piece of paper. Now there are two ways that I can attach this to my page edge and the first way is to use a tape runner. I like tape runners, it's a nice uh, quick grab, sort of quick instant adhesive uh, glue but you've got to be sure that you're putting your paper in the right place because there's no wiggle room. So let's see if I can get the tape runner. Sometimes they, um, they don't always run as smoothly as I would like. But this one I think is fairly new, so it should be okay. Yep, that's gone on beautifully. So I'm just going to double check before I fold it over in place that it's in the right bit, and it is. And that's lovely. And then I do, whoops, then I do, I'm moving the page about. I'm trying not to move this board about because I think it must make you very seasick. And then I'm going to glue this piece. And when you're uh, pushing the glue into position or putting the paper into position, just go from the centre edge out. And that way you shouldn't get wrinkles. That's pretty good like that so that's uh, that's no longer a problem that's dealt with we've kept the same width of page if we like um, if we wanted to what we could have done to eliminate it would be to fold the edge in so we could just have folded it in because when this is in place you wouldn't necessarily know further in the book that one page will be slightly smaller and having a smaller page just gives a little bit of extra interest and variety to your journal so that's one way to solve a problem of a rip 
the other way there it was I lost the rip for a moment the other way is um, to sew it so I'm going to do exactly the same I'm going to cut a piece of paper from this I'm going to cut a strip from this and I'm going to fold it over and instead of gluing it I'm going to sew it and I'll show you the sewing once I've completed that off camera this is now sewn in place um, I've just used a straight stitch zigzag is nice as well but because this this paper isn't the strongest I don't want to put too many holes in it and therefore weaken it further it makes quite a nice contrast to the page it's been added to so that's great because that's given us uh, a way of uh, solving a couple of problems that you might encounter but it also gives us extra variety and interest to our pages Now let's make some uh, tuck spots. This is another of the offcuts of paper and I'm going to, this edge has got a little, little bit of a rip here so I'm going to fold this edge in because this will also help to strengthen the paper. I really should reach under my desk and find my bone folder, shouldn't I? What I'm going to do is I'm going to add this to the outside edge of one of my sheets of paper and I'm going to add it to where it's going to make the most contrast. So although I've folded it the other way, I'm going to fold it back on itself because I'm going to add interest here and I'm also going to uh, cover up this uh, big blank space. So I'm going to get that right on the edge there and I've got a couple of choices. I could sew this or I could glue it and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop that little bit off there and I'm going to glue it again I'm just going to do this by eye because I can always trim it down afterwards and my glue of choice is uh, this stuff it's three in one. It's uh, I'm quite a long way down the bottle now, so I have to sort of do this a bit to make the glue um, <laughs> run out the end for easier. And I'm going to first of all, I'm just going to uh, glue this edge onto here, and then I'm going to glue it with the folded edge facing into the centre of the page here because then when you tuck something into it you don't have a, a raw edge you've got a nice strong folded edge so let's do that and I'm not going to glue on this edge where it's folded because that's going to be my facing edge that's open and that's how you will be ooh, that's how you'll be able to tuck things into the tuck spot it's a bit clumsy there but I got tiny little bit on my mat but that's okay got rid of that I'm going to put this right to the edge I'm going to try and not glue it to my mat pillow <laughs> that's happened <laughs> this is like the house of glue there's glue everywhere so that's our first tuck spot so you can see we're beginning to build it up, we're beginning to add interest to our layers. We have our mended pages and now we have a page that has a tuck spot in it. So now what else can we do? I'm going to use one of the plain pieces of paper and one of my patterned pieces of paper or printed pieces of paper and we're going to make, um, we're going to do something clever. So what I'm going to do to stabilise the edge is I'm just going to fold the edge over by about a quarter of an inch. There we go. The reason that I'm doing that is because I want to have a protected edge. I, I think a raw a edge, when you're doing uh, places to tuck into, that's where your fingers are going to be. So your fingers are going to be constantly hitting an edge. If it's a raw edge, I think there's a greater risk that you will rip it. If it's a folded edge, then you've got double the strength and I think there's less chance that you will rip it um, when, you're, when you're putting things in and out. So I folded in one edge. I'm going to fold in the other edge. If you have a scoreboard, you can of course score it. But I'm assuming that we're, we're working with that, anything like that, we're just going for real basic 
uh, basic stuff here which still delivers a great great result. Now that I've got my edges tucked in and therefore protected a little bit I can do I can do this. I'm going to fold this in. We're doing all of this by eye. That's absolutely fine. So I'm going to fold this just a little way, maybe maybe an inch over because we're going to create a double tuck spot. So that's folded over a little bit. I'm going to do the same with this. There we go. Now when I when I put it when I add this to this we've got two little tuck spaces here but we're also going to give ourselves a tuck space here so it's going to be a bit more than just a tuck spot. I'm going to move my mat out of the way and I'm going to work on my craft mat because this might get a bit gluelicious. We're going to have glue going in all directions, I think, because we're going to seal down this edge. This doesn't need an awful lot, just needs a little line of glue like that. The less I put in, the less risk that it's going to do that. It's done a little bit at the sides, but just on the edges so I can get rid of that easily. Then I'm going to glue in this piece. And then I'm going to glue top and bottom on both sides. I'm not going to glue on the uh, folded edge because then I wouldn't be giving myself a tuck spot. I'd be giving myself a headache. <laughs> I'd be giving myself a pointless piece of paper. So as it is now, I've done it top and bottom. And that means that, let me find something to tuck. Let's take this, let's take a little template. That will tuck in there. So if you had something little, you could just tuck it in like that. So now we have got two little spaces. So let's take our original piece of paper. I'm going to use a couple of paper clips because I want to make sure that I get these folds absolutely in the right place. I'm going to pop a paper clip there, a clip there. So that's right in the centre, same in the bottom. I'm not too worried about clipping the bottom, as long as it's, uh, it's in place there, that's fine. And now I'm going to glue the bottom and the top. Just the bottom and the top of, of the inside piece. All will become clear. There's a good line of glue there. And then do the same again. There we go. And now we've got a page that has got a tuck spot here and a tuck spot here. Just a little narrow one, but that's fine. And a little narrow tuck spot here and here. I've cut down a piece of paper. This is one of my waste pieces of paper. And I was about to glue it that way with the uh, folded edge forming the tuck spot when I thought, oh, let's do it a bit differently. So now what I'm going to do is fold this edge in. I'm going to try and do it neatly. Oh, the one thing I should say about this glue is it takes your nail varnish off. So <laughs> you can tell how far through a video I am by how much nail varnish I'm left with. Uh, it just seems to um, chip it away or sort of melt it away. Okay. So I started from here with that fold in the middle. 
I've added uh, some stabilisation to this edge here and now instead of sewing it like that, positioning it like that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew it like this. I'm going to sew it in place there. So I'm going to sew down this outside edge and then this bottom edge so that it will hold uh, ephemera or any little notes that you want to put in it. And again, to make it slightly different, I'm going to fold this corner in. just to where I can see, you probably can't see it, but I can see the fold here. And I'm going to fold this into butt up against that fold. So that now I can, I can put that in place there. That makes quite a tall pocket. And just to finish off, ooh, should I, I know, I, I don't have enough really to fold that edge in. So I'm going to take another of my pieces of waste paper and I'm going to cut a piece off and I'm going to, I'm going to glue that probably onto that raw edge. You can see how quickly your design will build up and how much versatility just book paper has and just photocopy paper has you don't need to uh, go and buy um, special papers you can do when you get more um, interested in it perhaps and maybe you want to invest a little bit you can go and do all of that but um, actually the whole point of junk journaling is to use up these things and there's a, there's a whole uh, amount of pleasure from knowing that you've, your junk journal is comprised of your imagination. It's not somebody else's imagination. You've done it all yourself. I'm going to snip this. Shall I snip it? Shall I fold it first? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to just snip off a little bit because I'm going to fold that in because that will help reinforce that edge. At the moment it's squint. Hello. <laughs> On the wonk. That's better. And I'm going to glue that. Oh, isn't that perfect? That's just right. That's a nice right angle to make there. Um, so let's think. Let's do this properly. Let's glue these bits here first. So we'll glue it onto the edge of our sheet of paper to begin with. And now I will fold that oops, with some glue on the inside. Nicely reinforced. What I haven't done is I haven't glued this. I'm just wondering why that, that flap is still flapping. And it's because I haven't glued it. And I'm going to go to my sewing machine. If you don't have a sewing machine, you just glue this. This is fine. And then when I sew this in place, because I've got lots of folds and therefore lots of reinforcement. Hello, dog. <laughs> Can you hear him? <laughs> He's quite cross. <laughs> Sweet, really. <laughs> Uh, because this is well reinforced, I'm going to use a nice zigzag stitch. So I'll go and do that just now and I'll come back and show you how it looks. Here we are. It's uh, zigzag stitched down the bottom and the side. And that's the reverse. I'm going to trim away some of the threads. Sometimes it's nice to leave the threads hanging. Sometimes you just want it a little neater. And that's another of our pages completed. I'm going to give myself uh, two little pockets at the bottom of one of my sheets. So I've taken one of my offcuts again and I folded another piece of paper over the top of that. I'm going to stitch along this line. I'm not going to stitch it to the backing paper. I'm just going to stitch this and then I'm going to trim down the sides and I'm going to glue it onto the inside 
of these pages so I'm going to glue it down here, down here and along the bottom. I've got a couple of um, overhangs which I'll trim down with my scissors and now I'll add this page here. It's starting to build up, it's starting to look interesting. But I mentioned lace before and I've got some lace. I've got two options, I can glue this in place or I can sew it in place. That's sewn in. I haven't gone too close to the edge, it's easier to show on the reverse side. So I haven't gone close to the edge at all, I don't want to weaken that. I've sewn on the inside just enough so it will catch the edge here. And I'm going to trim this down. The other thing we can do to add some interest is take one of our strips of spare paper, cut it down. I'm going to fold it in half. Ooh, which side is most interesting? I like this side. So I'm going to fold it in half. I'm going to give that a good crease and I'm going to cut it down again and I can use that as a tab. I'm going to leave an edge. I'm going to take it right up to the top corner because that will then help reinforce the whole page. So that's one with a tab in it. There. And I'm going to add a tab lower down on this page. So if this one finishes here, I'm going to put my next one just underneath it. Let's open that out. I'm just going to use this page as a guide. I'll put it probably down about there. Perfect. Mm. Oh, got a visitor. Dogs come to play. And you can keep on adding little envelopes at the envelopes, little, little tuck spots at the bottom or at the side or at the top. But this is our basic journal and that's it complete. The signatures or the signature, because we're only doing one, is ready to be added into the cover. And the cover is what we're going to do next. I'm just going to show you where we're starting from. This is the cover that was sprayed and you can see it's got a nice gloss finish to it. It's dried really, really well. In the next video, we're going to be doing a cover design. We're going to be covering this over and we're going to be sewing in our signatures. So I hope you have found that useful. I hope you will come back and join me uh, next time. And in the meantime, take care.